Okay, it is 12 noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 2024 Giving Challenge kickoff webinar. Um, I'm so happy that we had so many people registered to participate to get some good information about the 2024 Giving Challenge. My name is Odie Monde. I'm the Manager of Nonprofit Services at the Community Foundation. And I just want to say congratulations to you all that we've made it this far. Registration is now open, and I feel like everything from here on out is just rolling forward towards that big date of April 9th of next year. So a few housekeeping rules that we want to start off with. Everyone is on mute. However, we do encourage questions at any time. So during the presentation, you can type your questions in the Q&A or the chat box. And we have our lovely team members here to help monitor that. Erica Kelly is our 2024 Giving Challenge Consultant with the Community Foundation. And we have some GiveGab team members, Katie, Victoria, and Taj, as well as Roxanne with Magnified Goods represent the Patterson Foundation. So we'll all be here to talk about important information to you today. This webinar is recorded and will be posted on the Giving Challenge website within the next week. But before we get started, we wanted to take a poll to see how everyone's doing and what their experience with the Giving Challenge is. So, the first poll, or actually it's both questions. How many times has your organization participated in the Giving Challenge? And how many times have you participated in the Giving Challenge? Okay, we got about 82% of people participated in the poll. We're gonna edit it. Oh wait, we're still going. I'll give you a little bit more time. Okay. So it looks like everyone is kind of across the board. We have a couple of new first timers. But we have some people who are veterans who have been participating in the Giving Challenge since 2012 and have done it eight times. So that is amazing. So given that, we want to review briefly what the Giving Challenge is. It is a 24-hour online fundraising event a nonprofit serving Sarasota, Manatee, Charlotte, and DeSoto counties can participate. If you have an updated profile in the Giving Partner, you can participate. And our community's Giving Challenge is especially exciting because donors have the ability for their gifts to be matched and nonprofits can win additional prizes. And we'll talk about that more in the The Giving Challenge is presented by the Community Foundation and this year will be the ninth Giving Challenge since the 2012. If you're brand new to the Giving Challenge, here's a high-level overview of the slides, or high-level overview of what we'll talk about today. Each nonprofit conducts their own unique campaign, and the Community Foundation offers trainings and workshops to help you in your campaign planning and strategies. GiveGab has additional resources to use at your disposal, and we hope that these are useful enough for you to apply to your fundraising strategies throughout the year or years where giving challenge is not taking place. Donations are open April 9th through 10th from noon to noon and donor data is available in real time to nonprofit organizations in the GiveGab dashboard. Funds raised through the online donations during the 24 hours are routed through the Community Foundation. And then one check including online donations, any prizes that you receive during the challenge, and the Patterson Foundation match funds will be mailed to each nonprofit by July 1st. So while the true impact of the Giving Challenge would be really hard to put on paper, 
we take a look, we can take a look at some of the previous statistics from past years. Um, so since 2012, over $75 million have been has been raised through the Giving Challenge. And that's unrestricted dollars that nonprofits have gained, which is hard to come by. Um, 30 million of that has been generously gifted from the Patterson Foundation through their matches and donor incentives. The only restriction really comes from the eligibility requirements of being located or having programmatic impact in our four county area. So here's a quick overview of everything we'll cover in this webinar today. It's a lot that we're squeezing in, but we're confident that we will be able to cover it all. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to put it in the chat or the Q&A, and we hope to have time at the end for Q&A as well. Well, this will be our foundation's ninth giving challenge in 2024. The theme, Be the One, created in 2016, will be our theme again for 2024. And similar to 2022, the giving challenge will take place on a Tuesday through Wednesday, from 12 noon to 12 noon, but it is earlier in the month of April this time around, from April 9th and 10th. The minimum online gift donation will be $25, same as previous years. And while the Giving Challenge is a collective day of giving, every nonprofit will conduct their own campaign, creating your organization's personalized donation page on the Giving Challenge website. We want to go over the main roles of the key players involved in the planning and execution of the Giving Challenge. A full list of roles and responsibilities for each group listed here is posted online on the registration preparation page of the Giving Challenge website. The Community Foundation hosts the Giving Challenge and our foundation invests in excess of $600,000. This is a mix of staff time, platform costs for the Giving Partner and Giving Challenge, we know the names are similar, but they are separate. And if you need any clarification, let us know. And the Community Foundation does not receive any of the funds raised from the Giving Challenge. GiveGab, which is becoming Bonterra, is the tech company providing the Giving Challenge and the Giving Partner platform since 2020. They are the team behind the blue chat bubble you're probably already familiar with. And if not, that's okay. Katie will talk more about that in a few minutes. Your role as a nonprofit organization is creating your Giving Challenge campaign and engaging your donors. Your organization's success in the Giving Challenge really lands on a level of engagement your organization chooses to embark on. Like we had for the last Giving Challenge, you will identify a team lead when your organization submits its Giving Challenge application. And that team leader will be the single liaison with the Community Foundation for the Giving Challenge. All of our communications we share will go to your giving, your organization's team leader. So who will then be responsible for disseminating that information throughout your organization as needed? We do anticipate nearly 700 nonprofits to participate this year. So having one point of contact will help us respond to you most efficiently. In addition to the benefits of funds raised every giving challenge. There are several other reasons that our foundation continues to support this initiative. We want to generate excitement in the community, expose them to philanthropy and debunk the myth that you have to financially be wealthy to give back. Earlier slide showed average online donation amount was about $100 in 2022. And if you factor in the Patterson Foundation match, that turns into $200 gifts. And then if you factor in the 80,000 gifts in 2022, that was how that $16 million was raised. This demonstrates that everyone, big and small, can be a philanthropist and make an impact together. The Giving Partner is a great resource for the community, and the Giving Challenge is an opportunity to increase this platform's exposure as well. The Giving Challenge also increases awareness about donors' choices for giving locally and generates opportunities that extend beyond the 24-hour challenge. We know the Giving Challenge is a lot of work, but we hope you've heard from others and see for yourselves the benefits of your organization participating in the Giving Challenge. The poll mentioned that I think about 10 or 20% of you have been come coming back for the benefits and the digital tools for the Giving Challenge campaign 
but also assisting for overall fundraising efforts are reasons that people come back and participate year after year. By being part of this four county event, the Giving Challenge is an opportunity to re-engage existing supporters as well as reach a new audience. In the 2022 Giving Challenge nonprofit survey report, yeah, there was lots of quotes from other nonprofit leaders and participants on the benefits they've seen participating year after year. So overall, the buzz and excitement around the Giving Challenge motivates donors and is a fantastic opportunity to not only reach Giving Challenge goals for your organization, but spark other internal goals and additional year-round giving with donors. I will now hand things over to Katie at GiveGab, who will share more about who they are and walk you through how to register and build your online Giving Challenge profile. Thank you, Odie. So as Odie mentioned earlier, GiveGab is the tech partner behind the Giving Challenge and the Giving Partner. And we're just here to make your lives easier and support you in your fundraising campaigns. So we're invested in your success and want to help with whatever you need to make your experience with the Giving Challenge and the Giving Partner really great. Our software is very user-friendly and it's simple to use and our donor experience is always at the forefront of what we're trying to do. So if you need any help while applying for the Giving Challenge or using your Giving Day dashboard, please know that we have a dedicated support team that's here for you along the way. As you work on your profiles and get ready for the Giving Challenge this year, you also may notice that GiveGab is becoming Bonterra. So as you see the name Bonterra anywhere, don't worry, that's us. This doesn't change your participation in the Giving Challenge or impact the tools that we're going to review in today's webinar, and you'll continue to receive the same customer love and support that you always have with GiveGab. So just some more information about what GiveGab is as a platform. GiveGab is completely safe and secure, and this is extremely important to us. We are a PCI level one compliant company, and we've partnered with Stripe, which is a PCI level one payment processor with the highest level of security available with the strictest standards. So as an example, Amazon uses Stripe and a lot of other high profile companies also use it because they value that security for their users. So with that, we also ensure that each organization is verified by the IRS and recognized by their state. This is to help protect donors and your organization so that only legitimate nonprofits are fundraising on the platform. If you have any questions about this, we are always happy to chat with you more. So we provide simple donation processing to ensure that the donor experience is easy and enjoyable. All major credit cards are accepted. Uh, we process all transactions securely using our GiveGab pay processor, as I mentioned, Stripe, which again is that PCI level one compliant payment processor. Once more, this is the highest level of compliance available. Your donor's safety and security is at the forefront of our minds all the time. So although our donation process is simple, it's fun, it's easy to use, we definitely understand that questions can still come up. And we also understand how important it is to have support available during that critical moment of a donor actually making their gift. So because of this, we have chat support available right within the donation form for easy access to our support team every step of the way. So on this slide, you can see an example of our awesome gift basket feature. Donors can add organizations to their gift basket to keep track of where they'd like to give as they browse throughout the site. Donors can add organizations to their gift basket by selecting that option on each organization profile or directly within the donation form itself by selecting add another organization. This makes it really easy for donors to support multiple organizations in one smooth transaction. So when donors give through the Giving Challenge, they will have the option to cover the donation processing fees in the last step of the donation form. While this is always totally optional, we found that uh, about 90% of donors covered the fees when making their gift during the Giving Challenge in 2022. 
Although there's always a cost to raising funds online, donors aren't always aware of these costs. So by providing transparency around the fees, most donors are really willing to cover them to ensure that their recipient organization receives 100% of their intended donation. Donors will receive an emailed receipt immediately after the online donation is made. You are able to personalize this by adding a thank you message and an image or video right on your uh, Giving Day dashboard. So just one nuance to note here, if a donor is giving to multiple organizations in one transaction, they'll just receive the general thank you message from the community foundation uh, that is hosting the event. Uh, the donation information for each gift will be stacked on top of each other with the standard donation info. They just won't receive your personalized thank you uh, from each individual organization if they're making a multi-gift transaction. Just a small nuance there. So the Giving Challenge site is designed to be mobile responsive just to ensure that donors have a really positive experience regardless of the device that they're using. So as you're editing your profile, just be sure to test the appearance on a phone or on your iPad, different screen sizes, uh, just to make sure that all of your formatting looks the way that it should. Now, before I dive into what's new this year for the Giving Challenge, I do want to highlight how your team can get support with any questions you may have about registering for and participating in the Giving Challenge. So GiveGap has a dedicated customer success team available to help answer any questions that may come up at any time throughout this process, in addition to hundreds of support articles that are available online 24-7. We also have an extensive blog where you can find tips, tricks, and strategies to take your giving day to the next level. And then to get in touch with that customer success team, you can send us an email to customersuccess at givegab.com or simply write into that little blue chat bubble with your question. And remember, our team is here to help you succeed. So really, no question is too big or too small to ask. So now let's look at what's new for 2024. As I mentioned earlier, GiveGab is becoming Bonterra. You may have already noticed this if you've logged into your giving partner profile recently. You'll use the same email and password that you're used to using. Things just look a little different. GiveGab.com will now take you to the new Bonterra homepage. After selecting login on that homepage, you'll just be prompted to select which product under the Bonterra umbrella you're looking for. You'll just need to select GiveGab Core, which will take you to the regular login page that you're used to seeing. Again, this is the same login that you're used to using for the giving partner. You'll use this uh, to log in to GiveGab moving forward. My real personal new favorite feature is our updated search design. So this new design is going to improve the experience for your donors by creating a much more engaging and streamlined search process. This is just a look at uh, some of the features that are available on that new search design. So during the donation period, right on the front of that search page, a donor will be able to add your organization to their gift basket, select a pre-determined uh, amount or choose their own amount and just continue to browse directly on the search page. Uh, if they select donate on that search page, this little pop-up will appear. Um, we have predetermined amounts, those donation levels. If, and we'll get to this in a few slides, if you add custom donation levels on your Giving Challenge profile, those custom donation levels will appear on this pop-up. If you don't end up adding those, no worries. The default 25, 50, and 100 donation levels will appear. Um, donors will have the option to either add their donation to their gift basket or just go directly to the checkout donation form all on the search page. So it's very cool. It's very, very interactive, way more streamlined than it's been previously. And now we'll get into how to actually register for the Giving Challenge. 
To apply for the Giving Challenge, you'll want to visit the link shown on the screen, givingchallenge.org, and you'll be brought to the landing page that you see here. The register button will take you to our registration prep page, which goes over a lot of helpful information about participation requirements, information you'll need to know and have in order to complete the registration process, an overview of the registration review process, and then a ton of additional info. Once you've read through the registration preparation page, you'll be able to click the register button all the way down at the bottom. So we're going to talk about admin access in just a couple of slides, but as a reminder, you must be a full admin of your organization on GiveGab in order to register to participate. If you're a volunteer or new to the organization or only have editing access, someone who does have full admin access will need to add you as an admin on your organization's dashboard. If there's been some turnover and there isn't anyone available to help you with this at your organization, don't worry. All you'll need to do is write into our little blue chat bubble or send an email to customer success at givegab.com and our support team will be able to guide you through the process of becoming an admin so you can complete registration. After clicking that register button, you'll be able to search for your organization by name or by EIN. You must have an updated profile with the giving partner in order to participate in the giving challenge. Very important to note here. When searching for your organization, be sure to use the name of your organization as it appears on your giving partner profile. When you see your organization appear here, click the participate button to begin your application. And just something to note here, those are two separate steps for our registration process, having a completed profile on the giving partner and then registering to participate in the giving challenge. So to just note that those two are separate steps that you'll need to complete in order to re register successfully. So when you're searching for your organization, it should populate here. In the case that you do not see your organization populate after searching, please contact the GiveGab support team behind the little blue chat bubble or via that customer success at givegab.com email address. And we are happy to troubleshoot and help you with getting to that application. Once you're in the process of applying, there are some questions that you'll need to fill out in order to apply to participate. Once this form is complete, you'll want to click that register button at the bottom of the page. This will immediately create your 2024 Giving Challenge dashboard that links into your administrative dashboard profile, where you'll be able to make edits and customizations to your Giving Challenge page. However, your page will not show publicly until your organization has been approved to participate by the Community Foundation. An updated profile in the Giving Partner, again, is required for your 2024 Giving Challenge registration to be approved. Once the Community Foundation has verified your organization has an updated profile in the Giving Partner, your 2024 Giving Challenge registration will be approved and there might be a few days lag time between the two. Your 2024 Giving Challenge donation page will become visible to the public on the Giving Challenge website once it's been verified that your profile in the Giving Partner has been updated. Once that occurs, your 2024 Giving Challenge registration status will be changed to approved and admins of the organization will be notified via email. Please note that only admins with full admin access for your organization will receive the status update emails. In the meantime, while you're waiting for that approval, you can begin building your organization's customized 2024 Giving Challenge donation page after you've completed the online registration form. And here's a look at what that dashboard is going to look like, where you'll see your approval status um, as we're waiting for uh, those approvals to be made. Immediately upon uh, registering, it will not be in that approved setting. It will be notated as pending uh, and you'll be able to look at this anytime you log on to that dashboard. So now we're going to review how to go through that dashboard and build out your profile for the Giving Challenge in 2024. Here's that uh, admin access slide that I mentioned earlier. So something that you'll want to check on is who has admin access to your organization's profile on GiveGab. 
You can do this by clicking Manage Organization on the left side of your dashboard and then clicking Supporters. I really recommend sorting this list by clicking on Full Admin Access and then Edit Giving Day Profiles Only, just so you can review who can edit your profile and make any necessary updates. This can be really helpful in those instances where you might have members working on your project and only want to delegate access to someone who can work on anything tied to the Giving Challenge profile. This means that they can help create your profile, set up matches or peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, add offline donations, but cannot see or have access to donor reports, your bank account info, or any sensitive information like that. In many instances, Giving Challenge participants have volunteers or interns helping them with their day that have no reason to access the info. So when selecting admins to only work on Giving Day profiles only, just remember that this removes any access to their Giving Partner dashboard as well. Once you've submitted your registration, you'll have the option to copy over your profile from a previous year. This will enable you to simply update existing content rather than starting from scratch. And then once you've completed that registration and are on your Giving Day dashboard and you've copied over your profile or you're starting from scratch, whichever it may be, uh, this is going to be your home base for managing your profile for the Giving Challenge. Each blue box represents an area of your profile that has yet to be completed, and each green check mark represents an area of your profile that is complete. In order to set your profile up for success, we really recommend that you complete each section of your profile, and then over the next few minutes, we're going to cover each of these steps a little more in depth. So the first step is to add your organization info. And this will prompt you to add in some basic information about your organization, such as the logo, your website, and your causes. So just note that uh, these causes are different from your giving partner causes. Um, so be sure to pay extra attention to those when you are selecting them. Each of those fields are important as they each serve a purpose in helping donors find your profile on the Giving Challenge. Uploading a high quality square version of your logo will ensure that your visual identity on your profile is recognizable to existing and also new supporters. And as I mentioned before, entering those top causes that your organization identifies with really helps donors that are searching for new organizations to support to find your organization. So just an example of that, if you identify with the animals cause, donors can use our new cause-based search to find your organization. And then once more, the causes that you have to select from in the giving challenge are different from the giving partner causes. So just a reminder, be sure to look at that drop down menu and select the best fit for your organization. Now we're going to move to the add your story tab of your giving challenge dashboard. This next section is an important part of your profile because this is where you can share your organization's story and really engage with your supporters. First, you can add a cover photo that will appear right at the top of your organization's page. Make sure to use a compelling and visually engaging photo so that your donors will want to learn more about your nonprofit. Then if you'd like to, you can choose to set a monetary goal for your campaign. This is completely up to you, but if you have this enabled, it will display on your profile as well as your progress toward your goal. And that will show up throughout the giving day to reflect the number of dollars raised and donor support that your organization has received. So make sure to chat with your team and decide what monetary goal is right for you and if this is something you and your team want to include in your profile. Once your cover photo and goal are in place, you'll want to talk about the heart and soul of your nonprofit. This is where your donors will learn why you're participating and why you are asking for their support. Maybe you'll want to highlight a specific story or an individual or a special campaign that really shows your organization's impact and encourages donors to support your cause. You can add additional photos or a video and customize your text with different formatting tools or even HTML if that's something that you're comfortable with. Whichever way you decide to express it, this is your chance to really share your nonprofit's impact on the community. So feel free to get creative with sharing your story. And please note, if you have a video that your organization would like to add, you can simply paste the URL in that video, or excuse me, for that video in the video URL field 
in this add your story tab. You only need to enter the URL link for YouTube or Vimeo. You don't need the embeddable code for that. So this next section is optional, as I mentioned earlier, but we do find that adding donation levels is a really fun way to help donors visualize the impact their support has on your organization. These suggested donation amounts can be tied to a specific program cost or organization expense and can really help donors visualize the impact that their gift will have. And don't be afraid to get very specific with the amounts. So for example, if you're an SPCA and it costs exactly $35.85 to provide vaccines for a litter of kittens, that would make a really great donation level. Donors will always have the option to donate a custom amount, but having those suggestions really uh, humanizes and personalizes where their donations are going. Next is the thank you message. So thanking your donors is a really important part of the stewardship process. So you definitely wanna make sure that you take some time to write out a great and memorable thank you message from your organization. Your thank you message is included in the email your donors receive immediately after making their gift, and it's completely branded to your organization. So feel free to add a photo or even a short video to your thank you message to make it even more heartfelt and personalized to your nonprofit. The thank you message also serves as a tax receipt. So once more, your personalized thank you message will be sent to donors who donate to your organization in one transaction. However, if a donor is donating to multiple organizations at one time by using the gift basket feature, a thank you message branded to the giving challenge will be sent to the donor instead, which includes all of the details of their gift basket donations. Again, just highlighting that nuance once more. Now, this final section is where you'll add or recruit fundraising champions to promote your organization for the giving day. You can use your board members, volunteers, and even your enthusiastic supporters to expand your organization's reach. If you want to directly add a fundraising champion, click the Add Fundraiser button. You can also select the checkbox in the section that says Allow New Fundraisers to Sign Up, and a button will appear on your Giving Challenge profile that lets anyone sign up to fundraise for you. From this tab in your dashboard, you can also message fundraisers or make edits to what appears on their personal fundraising page. And then something else that you might notice this year is that fundraisers have the opportunity to add a display name to their profile. For example, if I sign up as Katie Branton, I could use the Branton family as what's publicly displayed on the Giving Challenge site. We love peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers because organizations with fundraisers raise on average almost three and a half times more than organizations without fundraisers. And that's a really huge impact. I strongly encourage you to check out the previous peer-to-peer -peer webinar slides that are linked here, as well as the trainings page on this year's Giving Challenge site. Now, this page is an example of what your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising champions page will look like. In addition to a user profile photo, fundraising champions will have the ability to add either a photo or a video to their text section, as well as text that explains why they're passionate about your organization and why they're fundraising for you during this 24-hour period. Your cover photo from your organization and logo from that main page will pull through into each fundraising champions page as well as the Giving Challenge branded colors. As you work through setting your profile up, you can easily view it by selecting the View Your Profile option beneath Other Actions. Once your profile is fully completed and ready to share out to the world, you can use that link within the Share Your Page box to share your Giving Day profile anywhere. You can also use the Quick Share buttons to easily share to X or Facebook. We still have that Twitter bird. And now that we've walked through everything you need to know about registering for and completing your giving day profile, this is just a, a completed profile. In this example here, you can see that this organization has uploaded their logo, which provides a quick and easy way for supporters to identify their organization at a quick glance. Additionally, they set up four donation levels to help guide donors to make their gift 
In addition to photos for each level, they've added descriptions to really help donors visualize their impact. Mm -hmm. And finally, they've used the story editor to customize their story section and included a great image to help further illustrate their organization's impact. Now, just some additional things that you can do to take your Giving Day campaign to the next level. So each organization does have the opportunity to step up their Giving Day fundraising with matches. Matches are an opportunity for you to secure additional funds in advance of the Giving Challenge to help incentivize donor participation on the day of. So for an example, you receive a $2,000 gift from a major donor or sponsor. You could ask them if you can use this as a match, whereby every gift that comes in from an online donor will be matched dollar for dollar. A donor gives $10, 10 more dollars are added to your totals from that $2,000 gift until it runs out. Something a little bit new this year is you now have the ability to set up matches on a two to one or a three to one ratio instead of the standard one to one ratio. So alternatively, you could set a goal like 50 donors and create a challenge. When your organization reaches 50 donors, a $2,000 gift will be added to your totals. These, uh, so both matches and challenges are really great ways to engage your supporters with specific messaging and asks, especially your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Uh, challenges can also be set up with a, a dollar donor or gift goal. So again, it's just one more way to kind of gamify the giving day and engage your donors to uh, encourage them to give to your organization. We also wanted to highlight the engagement opportunities tool. If you'd like to display an event that your organization is participating in or hosting, you can display that on your giving challenge profile. These events can also be notated as volunteer opportunities when they're set up just by checking a box and users will be able to search for organizations that have volunteer opportunities on that new search page that we looked at earlier. This is not required, this is totally optional, but it is a very cool engagement tool that you can use. You can find the Giving Challenge Nonprofit Toolkit linked at the bottom of your Giving Challenge dashboard. This nonprofit toolkit is a really valuable resource for all of your Giving Day needs. It includes communication templates, downloadable graphics, resources for board members and volunteers and fundraisers as well as just a ton of on-demand training videos to help you prepare for the Giving Challenge. We encourage you to leverage these resources as you prepare for Giving Day and feel encouraged to rely on them in your year-round fundraising efforts as well. Odie, it is back to you. Thank you so much, Katie. And so throughout this webinar, you've probably already seen within our slideshow, as well as on the Giving Challenge website. But we do want to take a minute to review our official 2024 Giving Challenge logo and branding. The logo is now available on the Giving Challenge website to download along with other branded elements like this new yellow backdrop and Zoom backdrops that all of us panels have going on here. The 2024 Giving Challenge brand guidelines are included online in the downloads tab as well. Brand guidelines provided are provided to make it easier for your organization to use the logo and to ensure that all 700 plus organizations that participate in the 2024 Giving Challenge are using these assets consistently. We just wanna make sure that you keep these logos consistent and so that when the community sees information about the Giving Challenge that everyone recognizes the same consistent logo and branding. On social media, we encourage you to utilize the official hashtag, hashtag Giving Challenge 2024, and hashtag Be the One. Be as creative as you want with your social media campaigns, as well as your overall Giving Challenge campaigns. And if you need any help at all, there are also templated posts in the nonprofit toolkit to spark some ideas for how you can word what you want to put in social media posts, emails, or newsletters. We have several other branded graphics available on the downloads page. You can browse through them as you develop your campaign to see which graphics might be the best use to you. 
comes in handy in newsletters, and these are all super easy to upload into Canva if you're using Canva or other um, branding materials to create your brand assets. And if you don't know, Canva Pro, the highest subscription level for Canva, is free for nonprofits, and I highly recommend that you use that if you're not using something at the moment. We want to reiterate the fact that your organization's success in the 2024 Giving Challenge depends on you and the level of involvement your organization decides to take on. Donors typically don't go to the Giving Challenge website to browse. They are driven there by your campaigns and your communication leading up to the 24-hour day of giving. So throughout the years, we've noticed your level of participation and preparation that really is directly proportional to the success of your overall campaign. And we've gotten some questions about prizes and matches for today. And so we're happy to announce a few of these for you guys as well. Several prize opportunities are available for the 2024 Giving Challenge, and they all told to be just about over $130,000. This year, we're trying to streamline as many things as possible for nonprofits participating, as well as our staff and team at the Community Foundation as we host the Giving Challenge. So this year, less than half of the prize categories require an application. A majority of the prizes in 2024 are automatically eligible for simply participating in the Giving Challenge. In the next few slides, we'll highlight which prizes require an application, but full details on prizes, their requirements, and the awards amounted for each are available on the Giving Challenge website. The application links and requirements will be emailed to team leads. So automatically eligible prizes, every nonprofit participating in the 2024 Giving Challenge is automatically eligible for these prizes and no application is required. The FAST 50 and the donor shout out social media post. And then some more automatic, automatically eligible prizes. If you meet these criteria, you'll be able to um, be eligible for them. So for the giving partner, if you update your profile by 5 p.m. December 12, 2023, you're eligible to be awarded the Get It Current, Keep It Current before the giving challenge. And that means that you either submit your profile with everything completed by December 12th or that it is approved by December 12th. Some more automatic, automatically eligible prizes are our new all-volunteer organization prize if your organization has no paid staff and is completely volunteer-led. This is a random drawing to 20 volunteer nonprofits participating in the Giving Challenge. We have a Giving Challenge Best Newbie. This is your organization's first year participating and it will be awarded to newbies who have gotten at least 20 donors, 20 unique donors, and that will qualify for this award. And lastly, we have Devoted to DeSoto for organizations based in and doing work in DeSoto County. Again, these are automatic prizes that require no application at all. Moving on to the application-based prizes, starting with the application deadlines for the giving before the giving challenge. The application process for these two prizes is prior to the giving challenge so we can share the stories and amazing video commercials in the days leading up to the giving challenge. It's, these two are probably my favorite ones and as well as the committee who reviews them, they love reading the applications for these. But this application doesn't open until 2024. We just wanted to let you know ahead of time to give you plenty of time to plan for them. For the post giving challenge prize categories, all require an application. Details on these prizes will be posted in the coming months. The actual application will be posted on the Giving Challenge website after the Giving Challenge ends. However, if you plan to apply for any of these prizes, we do encourage you to visit the prize page by mid-March to review the application details and really decide on which ones will be best for your organization to apply to. Similar to 2022, in an effort to maximize time, resources, and capacity of nonprofit organizations, 
we will be able, we're limiting the amount of posts giving challenge prizes that you could apply to. So you could, your organization can apply to up to three post giving challenge application based prizes. Automatically eligible prizes and pre giving challenge prizes are not included in this up to three limit. Also, similar years past, most post giving challenge prizes will be awarded across three categories based on nonprofit organization size. Nonprofit sizes are determined by most recent expenses reported in the giving partner. So remember to get your giving partner profile up to date. And the size breakdown will be divided amongst those organizations participating in the giving challenge into one thirds, making each size category equal in terms of the number of eligible prize recipients for each size. The 185 plus prize opportunities are made possible courtesy of several foundation and media partners shown here. We're extremely grateful to our partnerships that we've had over the years since 2012 for the Giving Challenge. We're still firming up some sponsorships and once we've confirmed those, we'll be posting them on the prize page for their acknowledgement on the Giving Challenge website. Now, I know we've thrown several dates your way related to prizes, but to help keep everything straight for you, we've listed them all here on this slide so you can easily identify them and mark them on your calendars. These dates are also listed on the Giving Challenge website on the key dates page. I will now turn it over to Roxanne Joff, founder and president of Magnify Good, the Patterson Foundation strategic communications consultant. Roxanne will speak more about the Patterson Foundation and their generous match opportunity for the upcoming Giving Challenge. Oh, Roxanne, I think you're muted still. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I started off by saying thank you in the famous I'm on mute um, statement. So the Patterson Foundation is a fully endowed um, mm -hmm. charitable entity that strengthens the efforts of people, organizations, and communities by focusing on issues that address common aspirations and foster wide participation along with the way that organizations learn and share as they evolve. I know that's a mouthful, but in essence, why does the Patterson Foundation support um, the Giving Challenge? We, the Patterson Foundation has supported and strengthened the Giving Challenge till, since 2012, um, contributing, actually now the numbers change, it's over 35 million uh, dollars and why because the Patterson Foundation believes that everyone can be a philanthrop philanthropist and the giving challenge provides the opportunity for donors to strengthen not only the um, organizations they believe in but also in turn strengthening the entire community and as you all know this is a this area has a really really generous gene running through it um so it also believes that nonprofits are encouraged to cultivate new and existing donors and during the giving challenge and beyond so it's really taking a futuristic type view as strengthening organizations and organizations fundraising capabilities. Uh, the match. Um, so the Patterson Foundation will provide a one-on-one -on -one match for donations up to $100 per unique donor, per nonprofit organization. So a unique donor is a singular specific distinct person or entity, business or foundation. So there's no limit to the number of individual matches a nonprofit organization can receive during the 24 giving challenge. 
and there's no limit to the number of nonprofit organizations a donor can give to and still get matched. And all funds stay in the four county region. That's that's uh, one of the stipulations. So how can you use the Patterson Foundation support to promote this opportunity? Um, there's a giving challenge specific logo with it for 2024. And it the Patterson Foundation does not position itself as a sponsor, but rather an organization that strengthens nonprofits. So it's rather than say sponsored by, the logo actually says strengthening nonprofits through the 2024 Giving Challenge. Um, just remember to uh, the Patterson Foundation is the Patterson Foundation, uppercase V um, T. And all these resources are available on the Giving Challenge website. So what can you do with the support from the Patterson Foundation to enhance your marketing? Um, you can include the logo, and again, not sponsored by, but strengthened by the Patterson Foundation. So through social media, through digital um, print and newsletters, including include in your annual reports, um, mail, appeals and e-marketing and press releases. And I would suggest that a thank you letter is um, is mailed to the Patterson Foundation following the giving challenge. And that's basically in a nutshell, everything's on the website in the resource section under the Patterson Foundation. Okay. Thank you, Roxanne. Okay, so as previously mentioned, we have the key dates available on the Giving Challenge website, um, but here are some that we just wanna go over real quick again that are important to keep locked in on your calendars. So if you don't know, registration opened yesterday and you're all here attending this kickoff webinar right now. Um, so make sure that you register between now and January 12th. And January 12th is our big deadline for pretty much everything. Getting your giving partner profile submitted and up to date. If you're a new profile to the giving partner, this is the same deadline for you as well as for existing nonprofits on the giving partner. And we want to continue to reiterate the fact that there are two steps really to participating in the giving challenge. So make sure that your profile in the giving partner is up to date and approved and make sure that you do register and complete that registration form for the actual challenge. Then come March 5th, we'll have our final step su success webinar that you can attend if you'd like to before the actual challenge that occurs on April 9th and 10th. At this point, we just want to take a pause, make sure everyone takes a deep breath and remain calm. We know it may seem like a lot to take on as a Giving Challenge team leader, or in general, as a participating nonprofit for the Giving Challenge. The key thing to remember is that everybody wins the challenge. Each nonprofit sets their own goals, and we hope that with all the resources that are provided to you, that you are able to hit those goals and exceed them. We have a very generous community as Roxanne mentioned earlier, who are eager to, eager to support your organization's causes and you just have to connect with them. Your organization gets to choose which prizes you want to apply to, how involved your campaign is, how engaged your donors, your board members, and your volunteers are. I do know there are some nonprofits who have some fundraising events in the spring, so they might choose to not be as involved in the giving challenge, but still choose to participate. And some people go all in and really participate hard in the giving challenge. So it's up to you how involved your nonprofit wants to be. And you get to decide if the giving challenge feels right for you or if it's not, and that's okay. 
So the next steps, as I mentioned before, update your profile in the giving partner and make sure that you watch your inbox for important emails from the giving challenge at cfsarasota.org email. Um, in general, we strongly encourage you to get your profile in the giving partner updated as soon as you can. So I'm gonna be that teacher in high school and college that tells you not to procrastinate. <laughs> and then if you do it by December 12th, again, you're eligible for that Get It Current, Keep It Current prize drawing. And we do ask that you're patient with us as our foundation team reviews profiles on the basis of the dates that they're submitted to us. So it might take us a couple of days or maybe even up to a week before we actually review your profile. And submit your application for the 2024 Giving Challenge. You're not automatically signed up to participate unless you update your profile and you register for the challenge. You can do both at the same time, but please do both. So the first email you'll probably receive from us will be by the end of day tomorrow, and it will include the key links mentioned throughout this webinar and the slides, as well as the Giving Challenge registration link. We encourage you to review the links, and after you read them, please register. The Community Foundation's monthly nonprofit newsletter is also available that we have key important communications about the Giving Challenge, so make sure that you're subscribed to our monthly newsletter. And if you'd like to, we encourage you to start following us on social media and using those Giving Challenge hashtags. And if you're not already signed up, we also encourage you to join our Facebook group, the Giving Partner Huddle. It's a great way to communicate with other nonprofits, ask each other questions, and connect with each other. If you and your organization is an experienced Giving Challenge master and you've done all of the above already, then you can definitely get started on planning your strategies for the 2024 Giving Challenge. Make sure to discuss your goals, um, strategies like peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, getting additional matches, challenges, pop-up giving stations, and prizes that you want to apply to. And with four minutes to spare, we're happy to stay on past 1 p.m. if you have any questions that you want to ask us still. We'll be here, pop them in the chat or in the Q&A box.